this morning, um, again, we, we spent the week in Callis, and uh, I was just very overwhelmed um, to listen to Francis Chan. Anybody ever heard of Francis Chan? Can I get a whoo from those of you who love Francis Chan? Um, Francis Chan is a pastor in Simi Valley, uh, California, who um, started a church and exploded in growth, a huge church. And um, he resigned from his church to go to Asia. Um, don't know why. Don't know if he's going for a month. Don't know what God wants him to do. Uh, he's leaving actually Saturday uh, to go to Asia. His wife called him a couple weeks ago and said, hey, uh, just called him on his cell phone and said, hey, uh, what do you think about us selling the house? So well, I hadn't really thought about selling the house. I mean, we're just going to Asia. We don't know for how long, maybe a month or so. And she said, yeah, but we know God hasn't called us here, so we don't need a house here. And that story, is, as Francis told that, just rocked my world. And I began to just think about that. And he began talking about how when you make that decision to, I mean, to, to sell everything and, and move to Asia somewhere, India, whatever it is, that, that people look at you and they go, hey, you have a big church and you, everything that you were doing was really good. And, and, and he talked about how it looks weird to do that. Until you open up scripture and you start reading through the New Testament, especially in the book of Acts, and then doing that doesn't seem weird at all. It seems very congruent with scripture. You know what I mean? Like if you took Acts chapter 15 and you plug Francis Chan in and you read, you know, the stuff that Paul did and Peter was doing, and then you went Francis Chan and moved to India, you just kind of read right over there and it wouldn't seem weird. You know what would seem weird? Is what most of us embrace as Christianity. And what would be really weird is when we read you know, Acts chapter 19 or something and it said, you know, so-and-so bought a bigger house they really couldn't afford and financed three cars they couldn't afford and you know, so that they could look really good to their neighbors and people would think a lot of them. That would be what would look really weird if you were to place that in Scripture. And, and I began to think about this idea of congruency with Scripture. And this morning, I, I, I want to tell you that I, I, I'm going to resign as your pastor. Now, before some of you have an aneurysm and the other half of you throw a party, let me explain myself. Four and a half years ago, when we dreamed about starting this church, I want you to know my heart was on 48,000 people in this county that didn't know Jesus. And as honorably as I knew how, I wanted to lead this team to do something about that. And for four and a half years, I think we've done that. I mean, I really think we've chased that. Um, I think we've tried to do that. I think we have embraced a community. But I gotta be just gut level honest with you. As much as my heart was on the 48,000 people in this county, a big part of my heart wanted a platform. And a big part of the reason I wanna start this church was so that my name could be made famous. And I wouldn't have said that to anybody and it, and it wasn't so much that that was the pervading thought in my mind. I wanna be honest with you, as much as I love this community and my heart breaks for the 50% of them that don't know Jesus, but I gotta be honest with you. Much of the time, my mind was on how can I be known? And how can I grow a church that the rest of the world would respect? And, and I just, I gotta tell you this, this is not congruent with scripture. And this morning, I'm gonna resign from all of that. And I'm, I'm not leaving, and I'm, I'm not, not going somewhere else. This is what I'm doing. I'm resigning as your pastor. And next week, starting I guess tomorrow, I'm gonna be your leader. And I'm not looking for a platform, and I'm resigning from the fact that Matt's name needs to be made famous. And I'm resolved to the fact that his name must be famous. His word says, in all the nations. And I don't know what it looks like to lead a church to do that from Marshall County, Alabama, with about 400 people in this, adults in this campus and however many in the other places we meet. I don't know how we affect the world, but if we can't do that, I can't be your pastor. So over the next four weeks, we're going to ask one question on Sunday morning. We're going to ask the question, what if? 
And for the next four weeks, I want to do my best to answer what if, what if we really took seriously the command to take the gospel to all nations? What would that look like for me and you? What would it look like? What if we took seriously the command to love our neighbor as ourselves? What would that look like to me and you? What if, what if we aligned our lives and we sought after congruence in Scripture, not what our culture has come to lead us that this should look like? Thursday night, as, as the night was ended, I, I sat with my hand, with my face in my hands. And I committed to God that for the rest of my life, to the best of my ability, as long as he would lead me here, I'll lead this church to be congruent with his word. And I'm asking you to follow. I'm asking you as we take this journey, and listen, I'm, I, I'm not going to overestimate God in the short run. And I don't want to underestimate God in the long run. I'm absolutely committed to you for long term. A year ago, I told you I'd give you 10 years. As long as you wanted me, I'd commit 10 years of my life and never go anywhere else. And that hasn't changed. As a matter of fact, I'd like to spend the rest of my life doing that. I, I believe, I believe with all of my heart that we can impact not this area. I, I think we can have an impact on the world. But I think for us to do that, your pastor, your pastor needed to change. And I'm saying to you that to the best of my ability, I'll lead you. I'm not a good pastor anyway. You don't, you need me. To, I mean, I, I need to resign as your pastor. I'm not the best person for you to come talk to. And, and, all, and I know that. You know, the real pastors of this church are the staff guys that you all know. But I'll be the best I can be and do the best I can do to listen to where God's leading this church to go and to do my best to lead you there. I'm just saying, I gotta have some help. If we're gonna seriously impact the world and not just Marshall County, then we can do it better than I can do it. We are a whole lot better together. So, next five weeks, I'm asking you to come, invite people, pray earnestly. I'm going to ultimately answer the question, what if we stopped coming to church and we started being the church? Would you pray with me, God? Thank you for this.